Clusterfuck is one of my favorite words. It can mean a couple things, but it tends to refer to everything going wrong at once in a big stupid mess of, oh my god, what the fuck am I supposed to do? There's a lot of clusterfucks out there in gaming, and it's a modern problem. We have the technology, the multiplayer functions, and the money to cram as much stuff as we want into games. Sometimes developers can't edit themselves, or they think adding more bad guys raises the difficulty of a game instead of simply making it more frustrating. In clusterfucks, it's not so much about having too many things to choose from, it's more about having too many things thrown at your face. Some games make you think you're stuck in a clusterfuck, but give you the means to control it. Take the Torchlight series, for example. You get surrounded by mobs of various low-level dudes that bite at your ankles until you fight them off. There's powers in every class for crowd control, which is specifically designed to bring some kind of order to the chaos of a clusterfuck. With abilities like summoning skeletons or spirits, you're given the chance to contribute to the mob and tip the supposed clusterfuck to your favor. Left 4 Dead is another good example because the majority of the time you're surviving waves of low-level, albeit fast and hungry, zombies with a couple special brain eaters mixed in for flavor. There's also game events happening at the same time that can make you panic or do something stupid. But it's all intentional, and it works because these games are built around the individual versus the mob, the inverse ninja theory, and have a lot more method to the madness than the most frustrating clusterfucks in gaming. Multiplayer tends to have the biggest standout clusterfuck moments that tend to range in the difficulty scale. There are clusterfucks that are so crowded that it makes the game easier, or clusterfucks that are so crowded you die before you understand what the hell is going on. You know, the fastest way to make someone super bored of Team Fortress 2? Take them to an instant respawn 24-7 2 fort random crits 42-man server. They don't even have to try very hard to rack up the kills and points because you can't fire your gun without hitting someone. There's just too many players on the field that any kind of strategy is lost the second the round starts. Soon you have entire intel rooms filled to the brim with board engineers having dispenser parties or sniper bodies littering the deck of each fort. The game turns into a massive stalemate, where the only objective changes from capturing the flag to deathmatch mode. There's little teamwork because it's impossible to work as a team with that many people playing with you, and there's barely any tactics to speak of. So the ceiling on the difficulty lowers to absolutely nothing. And this is why you see people who will only play on this kind of server. It becomes their comfort zone, where they don't even have to try very hard to accomplish anything, and there's nothing really attached to winning or losing with your team. And when things go bad, they go really bad. All it takes is a crafty, coordinated team of engineers to sneak into the other team's base and set up dispensers, sentries, and teleporters so they can effectively control both intel rooms. Or a group of super pro snipers that destroy anything that sips out of their fort. Or a group of medic heavy teams that go in and destroy anything that moves. But for the most part, nothing changes. You don't get any better at the game, and everything that makes Team Fortress 2 special gets washed away. On the other side of the spectrum, you have games that are such giant clusterfucks that the only people having a good time know exactly what they're doing, and have spent days learning, perfecting, and planning. As much as I love Guild Wars 2, The World vs. World is a perfect example of this. Sometimes you can get lucky and find small skirmishes that are 5v5, which allow you to see what's going on and battle other players effectively. But for the most part, you're going to see this hot mess. It's just a bunch of colors and a giant glob that looks like unicorn throw up. And by the time you get into the thick of the battle, someone has already killed you so hard, it's hard to understand how they managed to do it. There's no natural learning curve inside of this game for World vs. World like there is for the rest of Guild Wars 2. Even when you first show up, the NPC tells you you gotta start doing your homework, buddy, because you got a lot of shit to learn that even high-level, regular players wouldn't know fuck all about. It seems like such a stark difference in gameplay between the regular explorin', craftin', and broin', and then this, dying over and over again until all of your money and armor are gone. Oh, you don't like slap fights in a giant rainbow mob? Then you can fire this cannon, or fix a wall. See, buddy? You are helping. Sometimes clusterfucks don't change the difficulty in a game, they just make the whole thing tedious and frustrating. 
Think back to your experience with Bioshock. Did you have more fun fighting the identical, annoying, shrill screaming waves of splicers or a lone, terrifying Big Daddy? With the Big Daddy, you actually got to utilize some strategy along with skill. You could set up a bomb perimeter, make sure your favorite abilities were upgraded, and you had enough bullets to smash his helmet in. Fighting the mobs, on the other hand, was a long, drawn-out test in patience. They all tended to be the same kind of enemy and a very limited selection of baddies. They all had a tendency to blindly swarm and were easily kited as you threw everything you had at them. And this game has a lot of shit to throw. There's too many abilities, too many guns, too many mods, and too many bullets. And when you die, you can just respawn instantly and get right back to hacking away at those splicers. This game would have benefited by cutting the population by half or more, making the weapons difficult to get your hands on, and making the abilities more stealth and spy related. If the game felt more empty, it would have been scarier, and there could be more focus on the actually interesting mini bosses you meet along the way. If you had to sneak around the city of Rapture while the few remaining crazies were armed to the teeth, the tension would be high, and so would be the difficulty. The clusterfucking in this game actually ruins the mood from what is supposed to be a dying, flooding, and haunted rapture, and turns it into a carnival of wasps that you have to shoo away. Having to be sneaky, spry, and stealthy would have lengthened the game as much as the developers who desperately wanted, and kept the player from feeling exhausted and frustrated, not because something is particularly challenging, but because it feels cheap and poorly executed. If you want to make a game hard or give an in-game learning curve, you need to be able to edit yourself instead of just adding more and more until the player is overwhelmed. It's a fine line you have to walk between making a game too scarce and boring or making it too full and frustrating.